We need to take a step back now and take a look at something called flow charting and pseudocode. Um, the idea behind them is using logic diagrams and then using some statements to support them um, to understand how to uh, look at coding in a grander scale without getting bogged down into the individual instructions. If you've taken any previous programming courses, you're probably familiar with flow charting. Flow charts use graphic symbols to represent different types of program operations. These symbols are connected together into a flow chart to show the flow of execution in a program. Um, there are lots of, uh, lots of ways to do it. You can draw them out on paper using a template. You can use Visio and you can use Word. Here you can see um, the standard symbols. Um, terminal, process, decision, subroutine, I.O., and a connector symbol. So it gives you a range of, of uh, flowchart logic to write a program. Flowcharting, though, um, has been a standard practice for the industry in the industry for decades. However, some find limitations in using the flowcharts, such as the fact that you can't write much in those little boxes and it's hard to get the big picture of what the program does without getting bogged down in the details. The alternative then is something called pseudocoding. Uh, it uses flow charting but with some statements. The um, little descriptions kind of guide you through the operation. Structured programming uses three basic types of program control structures, the sequence, the control, and the iteration. Sequence is simply, sim, simply executing instructions one after the other. We can see in this figure um, that the sequence can be represented in pseudocode and in flowcharts. If we look at something a little more detailed, um, two control programming structures, if then else, and an if then in both pseudocode and in flowcharts. So in this case, you can see the same types of symbol, symbols and symbology, um, but we also have our pseudocode. Note that statement can indicate one statement or a group of statements. If we take a look at this repeat and while application, two iteration control sequences repeat until and while do, both structures execute a statement or group of statements repeatedly. The difference between them is that the repeat until structure always executes the statements at least once and checks the condition after each iteration where the while do may not execute the statements at all because the condition is checked at the beginning of each iteration. So depending on what you're trying to do and the economy um, of coding, the number of lines of code, uh, you may choose one of these over another. If we take a look at this example, this little, um, this little uh, example code, finds the sum of a series of bytes. Notice that the pseudocode gives the same information in a much more compact form than the flowchart. So here we see no flowchart, um, but we can write the code out um, in the form of pseudocode. So the same written in, fl in a flowchart, less informative, um, and you have to understand by looking at it what's going on here. So you can see that the flow chart multiple steps, multiple boxes and the space that it takes in some cases you may end up carrying code in flow chart form from page to page to make it all fit. You may have to use um, annexes. Okay so that is pseudocoding and flow charting. Um, we will leave that there. Um, if you need more information, um, there are tons of uh, websites out there that talk about pseudocoding. 
um, in flow charting on the internet. If you go out and, and Google either one of those terms, you'll find out that um, each one of them has lots of instructional material.